The following is a production of Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. Well, acoustics has been, been used a very long time to find fish. The echo sounder, basically it's like a flashlight beam that's looking straight down from underneath the boat, straight down to the bottom. And anything in the water that has a density contrast to the water will create some kind of echo. To date, most systems have been what we call single frequency or narrow band. The way we think about it is it's like watching TV in black and white. But when you went to color TV, you got a much richer experience, and there's a lot more information. Narrowband is, is a single frequency, um, so like a single pitch. Uh, so if you have a tuning fork, you hit the tuning fork on a table, um, and you're going to hear a single tone. So imagine uh, having a device that not just sends out one frequency, but a whole range. So if you had a whole bag of tuning forks, for example, uh, and, and dropped them all at the same time, you'd have this, this sound uh, spanning a wide range of frequencies. You're taking advantage of the fact that different kinds of organisms scatter sound differently as you change the acoustic frequency. In essence, we use the broadband spectrum to fingerprint the organisms. So different kinds of things, things like a fish that might have a, a swim bladder, uh, will scatter sound very differently as you change the frequency than something like a krill. So we're able to see the krill as well as the fish all with the same device. So what you see can be very different at different frequencies. For example, if you're using very low frequency sound, you're not going to see the zooplankton. So you might think, oh, the ocean is empty. There's nothing here. But then you look at a higher frequency, and suddenly you see the zooplankton. People think that there's much more biomass locked down in the mesopelagic zone. It has been grotesquely underestimated. As a biologist, I want to know ecologically meaningful quantities, like how many animals are there present, uh, what size are they, what kind are they. So typically what we do when we're in on a ship is we have our acoustic devices and then we complement that with other kinds of independent, what we call ground truthing. So uh, optical devices, cameras, uh, or the, the go-to is, is traditional net systems. So can we check this out? Depending on where we are in the cruise, we might say something like there's a really interesting patch of what looks like zooplankton. Let's put a net in and make sure that those are the zooplankton that we think that they are. So with the nets, we want to be confirming that indeed the, that what we think is krill is krill. And also we can find out exactly what species of krill we're talking about. So if we have a better sense of where the krill tend to be, what things are feeding on them in those locations, we can perhaps get a better handle on how to manage the ecosystem. species that has a, is commercially fished must have a management plan. And to have a management plan, you need to know how that population is doing. Is it increasing? Is it declining? Is it, is it older individuals or are there younger individuals? Those are the kinds of questions that we can really help people address. Using some of these broadband techniques, it, it might be a way to sort of uh, present a more complete image of where all the fish are and uh, you know, help with management decisions.
To learn more about Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, visit us on the web at www.whoi.edu.